Welcome back to my shed. Enough screwing around with smart home stuff, although I have fixed the remote control for the roller shutters. I'll show that in a future video. Time to crack on with these. I've got a new self-imposed deadline. I want to be driving this with all of the upgrades in that body and painted by my birthday, which is in April next year. Six months to get this thing into the car I always wanted it to be. As you can see, I've already swapped one of the doors over from the green car to the silver car. The doors on the green car were in much better condition. I've done the easy one, which is the passenger side. Don't need to do the lock barrel on that. One of the big things on the list, as you can see from up here, is, oh, where's it gone? Rear battery box. I want to double my range with an extra five BMW hybrid modules. Partly thinks do I just slam them in the boot, um, but slightly awkward sized boot, particularly with this shelf that drops down from the inside, which is where the boot goes. Without radically moving things around, I can't easily fit many modules in there. I could just about squeeze two by side by side, but it'd be very, very tight. And I'd have to reroute the um, brake wiring, which is you know, not a big issue. A 12 volt wiring, slightly bigger issue. There's some chunky cables. It might be a bit of a pain to reroute, but I could push those up to the edge slightly and bring them out and around. So I could fit two modules there, but my ideal has always been to go in where the fuel tank is. So let me grab a torch and show you down there. The fuel tank on a Z3 goes basically above the diff. So this big dark lump here that you can barely see is the diff. And then there's this gap between the boot and effectively, oh, probably should have sorted out the light before I started filming. Stay, stay. <laughs> between the boot, which is oh, up there and back of the cabin which is here um, when I get the diff out because I need to get the diff out in order to um, re-bush the subframe uh, I'm going to do some cleaning up there and give that a coat of stone guard as well um, just so that's nice and protected and doesn't get any worse it's, made, it's not particularly serious rust um, but it just needs cleaning up so could I fit a battery box here might be a better view if I go like that it looks like a lot of space but again, it's a slightly funny shape. I reckon I might be able to get three modules in there, probably not five, but maybe three there and two in the boot. I'd rather not do a split pack if I can avoid it. Um, let's mock up a model uh, and see if we can get it in there. On second thoughts, this is gonna be a lot easier with the diff out and the diff's gotta come out anyway. So time to move the rear subframe. Coat of stone guard on the back sill, that's all looking nice and trim now. I've shifted the um, jack stand back out to the newly reattached jacking point cover. Um, so now the um, rear subframe is clear. I need to go and disconnect all the cables and pipes uh, and then pop the wheels off, stick a jack under it and pull it out. Yeah, mate, that sounds so simple. I would love to have the kit to just film this as I go along, but I can't hold a phone as I'm doing it. So you can see, wait for a drip in there because I've disconnected the flexi lines that go down to the subframe. I've done it up top here rather than where it's a bit more accessible. It might be easier down here um, because I want to be able to clean up um, some of these mounts um, before everything goes back on um, and give them a coat of paint and actually a little bit of welding as well. They were so, um, stuck on when I'd take them off last time, a year and a bit ago, wherever it was, two years ago, probably nearly now, um, that they got a bit mangled. So I might just weld them up um, and fix them a bit before I give them a coat of paint. So both flexi lines off now uh, and dripping. Obviously it's a good opportunity to change the brake fluid, put some fresh stuff in. Um, the cable here that connects into the diff is disconnected. The brake sensors and the speed sensor on the rear wheel is disconnected as well. We find those, that's one of the brake sensor connections. They're a bit mangled, but they hold together okay. And then you've got brake sensor and wheel speed sensor there as well. Um, just looking at my some of my brake hard lines, I can do this without, mm, let's see if we can catch some of that brake fluid. Get cloth on there. Um, 
yeah, some of my brake hard lines over there aren't looking too good. So I might replace those while I'm down here as well. These jobs are never small, are they? They always start small. You think, oh, it's nice and contained and simple and then you end up replacing everything. So yeah, before those become an MOT failure or more importantly, a danger, uh, I might replace those since I'm gonna be taking them off to clean all that up and give that a coat of paint and under seal as well. So next step, uh, spanners and ugger dugger to get the um, anti-roll bar down. Um, so get those off. Uh, and then it's the um, the big old bolts. Oh, well, I'm getting covered in brake fluid if I do that. Uh, big old bolts there and the two Allen keys. The Allen keys, thankfully, or the Allen head bolts are fresh. Um, I ended up, well, it took me about three or four days to get those out uh, on the original project. Um, so hopefully those will come out relatively easily. I may even have put a little bit of copper slip on to make sure they did. We shall see. These little sods are out. Um, it was not as hard as last time. I clearly didn't put any slip on them. Um, three out of four came out pretty easily. One, the one where these threads are nice and shiny, uh, made some horrible noises uh, on the way out. Something like sooty and sweet going at it. Um, but yeah, came out in the end. So I've got a, a jack under the diff. Uh, I've got to get the diff bolt off. Uh, and then it's just those two big beasties. Uh, I'll take the wheels off as well to reduce the weight a bit. Uh, and then I should be able to drop it down and slide it out. Two things I forgot, of course, disconnect the handbrake. And uh, obviously I have to uh, actually disconnect the prop shaft as well in there, um, which is a pain in the bum. Um, could pull it out with the prop shaft and all. Might be easier just to, um, to drop the center support actually. Oh, which you can't quite see. Drop the center support and then it separates and pull the whole lot out. That's probably going to be easiest. Bet you thought I'd forget to disconnect the uh, shocks, didn't you? But no, I did remember, <laughs> just about. So now everything pretty much is disconnected. It should all just be sitting on the jack. And um, we've just put some concrete blocks under the uh, uh, under the suspension arm so they didn't just drop all the way um, so we can lower that lower the diff down now uh, and then remove those blocks and lower those to the floor they're not too heavy on their own there we go it's down now the hard part number one shuffling it across and out the way number two getting very mucky with a Y wheel and cleaning all that up. <sighs> and then three, doing the dirty great bushes on this thing. Do you even lift? I do, I lift subframes and diffs. But it's out, it actually wasn't too bad. And I'm quite pleased with how it's looking. Um, I gave it a really rough coat of paint probably a couple of years ago now, just to keep it in decent shape. And by and large, it's held up. A bit of rust there needs cleaning up but everything else looks pretty good um weakest part are the brake shields um which were rough beforehand and are even more rough now if i've got a bit more money by the time it comes to put this back together i might replace those it's a bit of a pain of a job um because you have to take the whole hub off and everything um but could be done if needs be and the job that really needs doing is replacing these bushes these were an advisory on the last MOT. Uh, and I may well do these bushes at the same time, we shall see. But definitely these ones, these ones need to come out. Everything else looks okay. Um, these were new hard lines when I did it a couple of years ago. So although they've got a bit of surface rust, they should actually be fine. Um, the drop links were new, they're looking all right. Um, the, I don't think I replaced the uh, anti-roll bar bushes. Um, but actually they look in reasonably decent shape there's no um, distortion they're not they're, they're gripping the bar pretty well um, i'm not an expert in these things by any stretch of the imagination but by and large this actually looks all right so let's get in and have a look under the car so not too bad all around really 
bit crusty in places, but nothing super serious. I'm a bit worried about this sill. There's some bits that are looking pretty bad on there, but I'll do that from the side. But we can clean up behind here, get the uh, wire wheel on it and some rust converter and a coat of paint to protect it. Something's dripping. Can't work out what. I think it's rain <laughs> it's rain right you can see how knackered these mounts for the brakes are so that'll need a bit of welding up this one's actually all right it still grips the uh, uh still grips the thing okay but that one's pretty knackered so we'll weld that up and fix that i mean other than that it's a cleaning job and i think you know replace these very bent and wobbly and rather corroded brake lines for something a little bit neater um, and that should all be fairly tidy, if filthy. <laughs> it's messy work. I think I might call it a day, but let me show you where I've got to first. So the good news is it's all come up pretty nicely. One of the really frequent weak spots on a Z3 is this diff mount here. It's actually really solid. There's no structural rust at all, just a bit of paint flaking. So that's going to use. I kind of knew that, but that's good to confirm. Likewise, the uh, brake pipe mounts and stuff, they're all coming up fine. And there's still a fair bit to go. You can see that I can't get in everywhere with the angle grinder. I could probably do with a couple of other different shaped uh, wire wheels on. don't have a die grinder actually, but maybe on a drill. Uh, started up in here as well just taking off any loose paint and under seal uh, needs a good coat of rust converter probably hit it with a wire wheel again before I do that rust converter primer and then stone guard once I've got it all cleaned up by and large not too bad really nothing really structural back here until we get down to this sill, that's the thing that's concerning me, but we'll get to that. See this? This is my smug face. Because I forgot my keys to the garage today, and it didn't matter, because I could open the door with my phone. <laughs> anyway. Well, already I'm absolutely filthy again. Still managed to get stuff in my eyes, despite the glasses. But I have got some good news, well, mostly good news. Been looking at the sill on the other side, and I know I'm doing things in a slightly random order. I'm just, I'm doing what appeals to me, um, which I found is the best way to just keep moving. And short version is, whoa, grab this light. Um, it's basically the same as the other side. Is it corroded? Yes. Is it probably going to get worse? I suspect so. Am I going to cut the whole thing out and try and fabricate a replacement right now? No, I'm not. Um, and my plan with this car is, look, I want to get it up to a standard where I'm really pleased to drive it and it's a nice car. Is it safe right now? Yes. Is it perfect? No. If I get this car to a really nice standard, externally at least, then I might just pay somebody to do these awkward bits. Um, take it to a proper body shop and get them to do a really nice job on it because I want this car for life if it works out well. But for now, it's about getting it to a standard where it's not going to get any worse quickly um, and where I can get the body on and make it nice and make it drive well. So look, is this perfect? No. Will it do for now? Yes. Um, the bit that won't do for now, it uh, does need a little bit of tweaking, is around here. Oh. Now, same on the other side. I fixed this on the other side last time around. There is actually a hole, so I just need to cut that out and make a little repair panel up. It's a bit awkward, it's an awkward shape um, that needs folding in various dimensions, um, but it shouldn't take me 
<laughs> more than a day knowing my speed of doing these things so a job for a future Tom more random bouncing around and there's gonna be a lot of this as I just try and run at things that are fun um, I've got to strip this car down because this body is going on this is the Tribute Automotive Z300S kit um, for those that don't know uh, I put it on this car uh, as a mock-up because this car turned out to be too rotten in the sills to save um, and so I'm stripping this car for parts, using them to make this car great, this car great, uh, or good at least, and moving the body kit over from the mock-up over to here before I start. Well, maybe before I start, um, but certainly um, whatever I do, I've got to strip the back of here. And there's a bit more rust to clean up down here as well. But I got the bumper off, uh, and I started stripping out the boot, uh, and stripping actually the boot lid as well, because I need some parts off here. And there's a lock solenoid there, and actually the locking mechanism and the lock pin from down here. Um, so I've just popped the uh, locking mechanism in there, so you can see how that goes. It's actually got a it's got a threaded rod on it that goes to a a hook that goes into the solenoid, which I'll probably mount uh, up here somewhere. Um, because I want to be able to remotely open this boot. I think what I'll probably do is put overpowered gas struts on it, um, just for simplicity's sake. It means I can avoid putting anything on the uh, on the outside here in terms of locking, or you know, even drilling in here. Um, obviously it would have to be up here because that's where the locking mechanism is. So I can avoid that, just put overpowered gas struts on and have the solenoid working, um, all of which works with the existing boot wiring. Um, so I'll probably um, drill out this hole here, come in with the boot wiring round to here, um, take, make a cut out here uh, to mount the solenoid in. Also got to mount the high level light, which goes in there. So that needs cutting out as well. Um, that will also need to come out of the boot here. Uh, and this one obviously needs a bit of a clean up, but it works, it works fine. So a bit more stripping down to do. Uh, and then I think you might call it a day. Thanks for watching. Lots of handheld stuff in this one. Um, yeah, six months. Six months to build the car of my dreams, basically. <laughs> if you want to see the rest of that, keep watching. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.